hello friends uh, welcome to another video in the series of videos for learning basics of coding today we are going to talk about a uh, couple of important building blocks uh, of a program variables and data types so uh, let's get started directly with code and we will talk about these concepts uh, as we code so I'm going to again create uh, a new uh, console application project. We'll do it in C++. Uh, let's go ahead and name this project as variables and data types. Go ahead, click on next. Uh, just uh, selecting the default options. I click on finish. And this should pretty much uh, create the program that we saw in our last video. Uh, this is a hello world program. Uh, so uh, we already discussed about this program in the last uh, video. And if you haven't seen it, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, to see it, especially if you are uh, new to coding because uh, that covered uh, a few important concepts uh, to get started. So what I'm going to do is uh, previously we saw we were printing out uh, see out hello world. So I'm going to just uh, do uh, a couple of simple things. So I'm going to define some variables and we'll, we'll talk about what uh, are variables, what are data types. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and remove this see out. Uh, let's say output this variable c n line and i'm gonna say int i equal to 10 c out uh, i n line and i'm gonna say float f equal to 1.5 and uh, i'm gonna say c out f n line finally bool b equal to true and c out b n line now let's just get uh, let's just build and run this program first see what's happening and uh, then i'll explain you uh, did i probably miss something yes uh, i think uh, i uh, typed in one instead of i so uh, let, let me rebuild it uh, the build is successful i'm going to run this and we should be see something printed uh, out on this console application shortly yes so i said c out c and c had the variable c in there so it uh, printed c i also printed uh, the variable i which has the value 10 similarly uh, the float variable 1.5 and then the boolean variable 1 so uh, what is this i mean uh, this gives you an idea what are variables they are storing some values but uh, uh, let's just talk about uh, uh, like let, let, let me explain what variables are so uh, let me give you a real life example uh, and the example i'm going to give you about is uh, cooking i like to cook uh, i'm not a very good cook uh, but i like to cook and uh, when i'm cooking i need a uh, lot of stuff to cook uh, so i pick up stuff from some containers uh, I would uh, open the refrigerator, I might uh, take out some vegetables and uh, I will uh, open a container which might have salt, I might open another container uh, which might be storing some kind of spices, right? Uh, and I might uh, uh, also put in some water, uh, I might uh, take all these things together in another container which would uh, uh, 
uh, which I will probably put on a, on a gas stove or an electric stove uh, to cook. And finally, I take another container once the food is cooked, uh, and that container is the plate uh, on uh, from which I'll eat. Right, so I'll take a, a glass plate uh, and I'll put my food in that, and I'll eat from that plate. So. Uh, you can see that I'm emphasizing about containers. Uh, so think my cooking like a program. Uh, so I'm taking some input uh, and I'm doing some processing, basically cutting the vegetables, uh, mixing them with spices and salt and water. Uh, all these things are stored in different containers. And finally, I am taking the output, uh, which I actually use to satisfy my hunger, right? So think of program in a similar terms. Uh, it takes some input. That input might be stored in some container and those containers are your variables. And then your program would do some processing, uh, which we can say like equivalent of doing, uh, cutting the vegetables, mixing them together and putting them on the gas stove for cooking. So your program might be doing some processing. In this case, uh, the program is just uh, uh, printing those variables uh, it could be doing the program could do some advanced stuff like adding two variables or calculating a compound interest uh, or predicting the stock market right but finally it takes some input uh, it does some processing it uh, prints uh, or it might return some output not necessarily printed it, it could email it it could store it somewhere in a file or database uh, but ultimately, uh, it uh, will return some useful output, right? So variables uh, are co like containers. Uh, they store stuff, uh, store information in them. Now, uh, let's take uh, one step back, uh, go back to computers. Because uh, I actually want you to visualize how variables uh, would uh, be stored or what type of containers they would be in terms of a computer so when we talk about computers uh, we talk about uh, data right uh, a lot of time a computer is processing data uh, lots of time the computer would be storing data many times that data would be in a storage uh, called as hard disk or hard drive hard drive is a persistent uh, storage Sometimes the data could be on the cloud uh, and ultimately even on the cloud uh, there would be some computer uh, which would be storing data on the hard drive, right? But there is another, another type of uh, memory in a computer which would typically be smaller compared to your hard drive. It's called as the random access memory or RAM. It's the primary memory. It's a non-persistent memory uh, which means uh, if you put something in that memory some information in that memory and if your computer turns off you will lose that data uh, unlike in a hard disk uh, if you put some data even if you restart your computer you will not lose the data uh, now in context of a program or an application uh, this is important uh, because uh, your applications your programs would store data in your random access memory so for example, care C. This is a container that is created uh, in your uh, primary memory or uh, RAM. And uh, this variable only exists till your application is running. In fact, when your application ends, this uh, container in the memory would be destroyed or it would be gone. Uh, so, uh, even if your data is stored in your hard disk, most of the application would bring it in your random access memory to make use of it. Most of the times the uh, data in your program would be uh, in, in the RAM uh, because RAM is fast and uh, programs uh, would uh, use uh, the memory to store data and uh, do computations and they will typically store the output as well in the RAM. Now, uh, when I declare, uh, when I say care C, I'm creating a container of a type 
uh, and this container would be uh, in my uh, RAM when I say int i I am creating another container uh, which would also be uh, in the RAM uh, and when I say float f again uh, the same thing uh, and the same thing is true for bool b. So all these are containers uh, that are created uh, uh, in my memory, primary memory and uh, in future whenever we are talking about variables we will be referring to containers created uh, uh, in the RAM or the primary memory. Uh, so uh, now what is this care, what is int, what is float, what is bool. So again uh, going back uh, to the example of real world cooking. We have different types of containers. Uh, we might store salt in a small container. Your vegetables would be stored in a different type of container in your refrigerator. Uh, water might be stored in a jug or in a plastic bottle. Uh, you might have spices in a different type of container. So different type of containers store different type of uh, stuff, right? Uh, and this applies. Uh, to the programming world as well. So I'm saying uh, uh, that uh, create a container C uh, that can store a character basically a single character. Uh, here I'm saying create a container I which can store a number uh, basically a whole number. In this case I'm saying uh, create a container which can store floating numbers or numbers with uh, decimal points and finally I am saying create a container which uh, can store uh, true or false just two values. Uh, so these are called as data types uh, care, int, float, bool are all data types and uh, we are creating a variable of these data types. So uh, C is a container or a variable of type char. It can store a single character. I is a variable of type int. It can store a number, whole number. Float is a variable of type float. It can store decimal numbers as well as whole numbers. Uh, Boolean or sorry, B is a variable of type bool. Or boolean it basically stores uh, it can store only two values true or false or one or zero in fact internally it actually stores it as uh, zero or one there are a lot of data types uh, some other data types are short so short is a data type that stores whole numbers from 0 to 255 uh, it takes uh, less memory than uh, uh, int there is a data type called as long and long can uh, again stores numbers but it uh, can store uh, numbers which are very big so int has a limitation it can store numbers uh, up to a specific uh, range but uh, long can store numbers beyond that range but long will take more memory than an int float uh, uh, we already saw there is double and double uh, is again uh, like float it can store uh, decimals uh, but it stores uh, it has a higher precision and we'll, we'll talk about uh, that uh, when we discuss about advanced concepts. Now uh, you can also create your own types so you can create composite types for example uh, I can uh, create uh, a type that can store an integer and a character and the way to create that type is to define a struct. So there is something called a struct in C uh, we can uh, let me define a struct uh, composite one not a very good name but I'm just going to go ahead and define it let's say it stores care ch and int a and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to run create this uh, variable of this type composite one comp1 and I just say comp1 dot 
a equal to 100 comp one dot uh, ch uh, did i do a mistake or something let me make sure i think i should be good okay, okay. so i don't know i'm going to do c out uh, just print uh, this numbers a is uh, comp one dot a is comp one dot a and then comp one dot ch is comp one dot ch and line let's uh, make sure that i am not uh, doing any errors so i'm gonna do a build and just wait for the build to complete uh, everything looks good let's just run this uh, and we'll look at the output of everything here so uh, we'll see the output of uh, the struct where we see comp uh, 1.a is 100 i didn't put any space here so that's why uh, the comp 1.ch came immediately after uh, the 100 but we can see that we printed 100 and a so i created a composite data type here using this struct keyword uh, which basically defines a structure and uh, in addition to that we have output from our primitive data types uh, the character c 10 1.5 and finally uh, let's talk about this boolean i said true so uh, internally the bool represents uh, true as one and false as zero so if i would have done this as false we would have uh, seen this as zero finally i just want to talk about one last uh, data type enum uh, weekdays and i'm going to just define a couple of days uh, sunday monday Tuesday and what we'll do is uh, we'll, uh, so uh, yeah I have defined this enum weekdays with Sunday Monday and Tuesday and I'm just gonna say weekdays w equal to uh, let's call Sunday and uh, let's just print uh, what happens uh, see out uh, w and uh, and line and i'm gonna do redefine this equal to monday and i'm just gonna print this line again and let's let's go back close our previous console application rebuild this okay uh weekdays was not defined in the scope uh, it's because i have a problem uh, i have a typo with the casing so i'm gonna build it uh, build successful uh, let us run this uh, Uh, so we can see 0 and 1 as an output so uh, this should give you an idea what an enum is uh, so uh, many times what happens uh, uh, is that we need to uh, represent things uh, as numbers for example uh, first week of the day is 0 and uh, Monday is 1 and so on right uh, or there could be other things for example i want to represent color i want to say green is one blue is two uh, red is zero so enums are useful uh, in that sense uh, that it's like a integer type uh, but uh, i can give uh, names to numbers uh, uh, and i can have like related uh, uh, names together for example days of a week uh, where i'm giving uh, sunday uh, a number as zero and i want to represent monday as one tuesday as two 
Wednesday as three, Thursday as four, and so on. So I can just define in a weekdays and just define Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, so uh, just like a basic introduction of enums, uh, we will use enums extensively uh, in a subsequent programs. They are pretty useful to uh, they help to make your code uh, easy to read. Uh, so rather than saying uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, it gives a lot more meaning to say that I am uh, referring to a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, it, it, it makes uh, it more uh, easy to understand when reading a program. So uh, for today, uh, that's all uh, that I will uh, uh, I wanted to cover. Uh, in the next lecture, we will uh, talk about strings. Uh, you might have observed I never used any string here. I just used a character, single character. Uh, but uh, I will like to uh, talk about arrays and pointers uh, before we talk about uh, strings. Uh, so we will talk about arrays, pointers and strings uh, in our next uh, lecture. Uh, I also did not cover about uh, the size uh, of uh, uh, the memory that each of these variables uh, uh, occupy. So that is something I will cover as part of the next lecture as well. We will start uh, digging deeper into variables, uh, understanding uh, more about variables uh, and about arrays, pointers as well as uh, strings in the next lecture. Uh, thank you.